Hi, I'm Arielle Klepper here with Matthew Pendleton at Sinai Innovations. Our final speaker, Sarah Diamond uh, from OCAD University, really spoke to us about a lot of compelling aspects between art and design and medicine. I'd like you to comment on how you think about shifting paradigms in the way that design and creativity can implement medicine and how this can help us to visualize new models of disease and new perspectives. Uh, maybe I'll give you um, a couple of projects that we're actually involved with because there's nothing like um, the real world. And um, one of them is um, with a research team at the University of Brasilia and uh, OCAD University, MIT, and it's looking at dengue. And it's um, taking a new vision technology that um, allows um, a, a more precise identification of the dengue mosquito and its egg and um, bringing that into um, mobile technology and linking that with a visualization system and then um, social media to basically push the identification of dengue into communities where there are where the, there is a high risk of dengue so as well as the lab technicians you'll now be able to have people who live in those communities identify if they think that there may be an outbreak of the mosquito in that area the idea of social media, which is very much coming from the design thinking perspective, is to mobilize communities to take preventative measures around dengue. So you're both um, looking at actual identification of threat, but also building a different kind of culture to ensure that there's kind of a community activism around prevention. Um, there's another project that we're working with, starting to work with, which is a really interesting project. It's called the Biodiaspora Project. Um, and we'll be undertaking some research um, with that team. It's uh, led by Dr. Cameron Can of the University of Toronto. And it's um, a visualization environment that looks at different kinds of data sets that um, impact epidemics. So uh, transportation data, so where are humans moving and what are the um, sources from which they are coming, um, climate data and climate change data, uh, data around particular infestations and, and threats and layering this data together to be able to understand um, you know how to make a prediction around a pot potential epidemic uh, or an outbreak in a particular region or area so bringing together visualization capacity from an art design perspective to be able to make those kinds of tools I think that's very much um, one of the great opportunities in the fields that you're in and the fields that artists and designers bring to problem solving. Wow, and those are both really fascinating examples, and they both touch on something else you brought up in your talk, which was incorporating the human element, which both these projects seem to resonate with. Another follow-up question is, how do you identify what the important human problems are, because there are so many, and ones that you could effectively target? How do you find things for those sort of human-sided interventions? One of the um, skills that we have at our school, which I didn't talk about because um, of time constraints, um, we have a strategic foresight and innovation lab. And one of the uh, things that they do, essentially what they do, is they look at large-scale trends. So they use both uh, quantitative measures, so they look at actual data, but they do a lot of qualitative work where they um, look at what uh, are the big patterns and shifts that are happening within human activity and the kind of forces at work, um, both human and also natural. And out of that, they develop scenarios, so they're narratives um, that can identify um, potential um, possibilities um, in the future. And from those, they look at what are the convergences within those different narratives, and that really helps to create points of focus. So you can also find um, forces that you don't think that are really at work, that are outliers, that in fact will in 10 or 15 years have tremendous, tremendous impacts. They work with specific kinds of uh, user groups in order to be able to do that kind of predictive work and um, they were really instrumental to us when we developed our institutional strategic plan. So we actually went through a whole strategic foresighting exercise and then brought that foresight back to our actual institution to set priorities. Wow, fantastic. So, so um, the, the worlds of, of scientists and design uh, are historically quite disparate and um, as scientists, uh, at least my experience is, they are only now just sort of um, taking on a lot of the lessons that the design world has to offer as far as uh, communicating clearly what they want to say, which is sort of the whole aim of science. Um, what sort of 
things. Uh, if you were to have your druthers, would you want science to be able to bring to design? One, one of the things that we're very interested in at our school is um, evidence-based research that looks at the impact of design or of art um, within the process of um, healing, the process of, um, for example, um, the experience of being within uh, either clinical care or um, in uh, acute care. And um, we think that, well, we know that there's now evidence-based design that looks up the impact of excellent um, interior design of having green spaces in hospitals, of visual art on the walls, light, I mean, things that you would think intuitively, I suppose, um, uh, would make sense, but interestingly, we have not had those principles as part of how we design institutions. In fact, there's been a kind of aesthetic of institutionality that's been the preference. Um, and so we think there's a great opportunity to actually bring um, the science that scientists bring of looking at actual data, of gathering evidence to look at impacts to, um, for example, the um, arena of architecture and the healthcare environment. That's just one example. Um, there's a lot of more pragmatic, you know, uh, needs of bringing strong biomedical engineering capacity together with designers who um, are able to look at potential products and there's also a huge kind of inverse of that, which is that there's a lot of things that come out of labs that really need a designer to come in and say, okay, here's an invention or here's a piece of science and how do we actually look at potential applications and um, what are needs out there that could be addressed by this application. And I think if we had those relationships, more proximities between what's happening in the labs and with design capacity and design thinking, we'd, s we'd really speed up invention and we'd speed up commercialization of results or, or the um, ability to get results out to the world, knowledge mobilization. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you.